Thank you very much. So hello. Oh, <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> so, that's an autoplay for some reason. Yes, as there we go. As you said, so kind of my journey or my relationship with OKR started uh, during a five-year stint at Google. And at Google, you know, OKRs is just a given. It's just a given. Sorry, you hear me better now? Yeah. Everyone okay? Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, so OKR is just a given, right? There's no kind of question about it, which is quite a big difference from you know hearing it from other organizations doing it. And as is very typical within Google, I worked on a number of different teams. I was reorganized more times than I can count, mm -hmm. and I you know worked on a lot of different teams around myself as well. So that really gave me a good insight kind of into the good, the bad, and the ugly of OKRs. And it made me you know, confident enough into understanding what OKRs are to understand that they differ a lot of, you know, they mean a lot of different things in different organizations and different teams, but also confident enough in kind of the values that it could have to bring them with me into my next company. So I've been about two years in my current company, which is Good Lord. And kind of my aim today is to share a bit about, um, you know, the challenge we face at Google what I've done to you know, adapt those challenges or adapt OKRs for my own company now, or for the company I work for now. Um, and I realized I went quite far down the rabbit hole on the critiquing bit. So if you don't need to pull out of that, uh, let me know. Um, and then go through a little bit like how we work day to day with, with OKRs. So since uh, Good Lord is a London based prop tech startup, I don't expect any one of you to heard of it. So I'll give you a very, very, <laughs> basic introduction, but what we do is that we help tenants, agents, and landlord transact rental properties. And, um, you know, might not be the same thing in Germany, but renting is huge in the UK. Um, most people can't afford or are not interested in buying their own homes. And really this business kind of combines the best, or should I say worst, of British bureaucracy <laughs> with a outdated kind of paper-based market space. It's right for disruption. And our goal is therefore to make renting easy and transparent for everyone. It's kind of an overarching mission statement. And you know what we've done is since I joined in 18 months ago, we just finished our Series A when I came aboard. And we plowed through through our Series A, and we're now looking for our Series B. And during these 18 months, we've grown from we're actually seven when I joined to 150 people. So quite an aggressive growth. And I would say Ogar has been quite instrumental in trying to make that a controlled growth. Um, so, you know, coming into Good Lord, as I said, you know, we grow very, very quickly. And at one point in our company, there's seven of us, everything's just spread automatically, right? You overhear conversations, there's no meeting rooms, so everyone just knows what's going on. And we had a few, you know, we found, you know, 20 people, 50 people, 100 people, we had different kind of instances of, you know, we just have no clue what's going on anymore, right? You don't sit next to the people, you might be split you know, in different offices, and therefore you know, we need to do something about it. And luckily, uh, well, luckily um, I kind of realized this from the start, so I brought OKRs with us from the start, right? So really the focus here of OKRs for us is you know, making sure we have alignment across the business. And you know, starting from scratch was awesome because we got a fresh start. You know, I could do whatever I wanted with OKRs. There was no one there telling me, you know, we've always done it this way, which I, you know, a lot of you worked in thousand plus companies. I imagine it's quite a bit of a challenge, you know, getting that, you know, stop what's going on currently and, and try something new. But on the other hand, you know, we had no structures whatsoever. There was no meeting structures, there's no data structure and everything. So not only do you have to build out OKRs, you have to build out absolutely everything at the same time. Um, so, you know, since you know Google has affected very much of you know my interpretation of OKRs and what we do at Good Lord, I want to run you through a few quick kind of issues and a few <coughs> larger ones and kind of what we're doing about them. So these ones you know are pretty easy fixes. I just gonna gloss over them. More than happy to answer any questions about them if you're interested. And I'll deep dive a little bit into three specific issues. And again, might go a little bit uh, too too far down there. But, um, you know, regardless of what you might have read, there's actually no centralized tool within Google um, to use for recording your OKRs or presenting your OKRs, which means there's no really clear place of publishing OKRs, right? And one of the biggest points of OKRs that you should, you know, like I said, drive alignment through your business. And if I have no clue what your OKRs are or the team I'm interacting with OKRs are, how can I be aligned with, with their needs there? Um, 
there's also no really clear methodology when coming into the measurement of OKRs. Like there's a lot, a lot of data within Google and um, getting that data out is quite hard because there's just so much out of it. And you know, filtering it and looking at like what what piece did I drive out of the massive amount of things that are going on um, means you know it's very hard for people to actually understand how do I with my OKR drive the KRs or the metrics that is is attached to it. And you know, these things kind of then combine into being like way, way, way too much work in trying to update your OKRs, right? So most people would do in the beginning of the quarter, you would set your OKRs and you kind of do a little bit of finger in air, you do some analysis, hopefully get a business analyst involved it's helping you set them up. And then at the end of the quarter, you would scramble and try to see which metric moved and which can I steal the, the glory for and attribute to my OKRs. Um, obviously, this is kind of a, a more of a on the ground approach. Um, you know, we have awesome, or we had, I'm no longer there, uh, awesome, you know, company OKR meetings and, you know, it works quite differently in different departments. This is more speaking directly from kind of a, what's called within Google global business operations. So anyone who's not an engineer basically fits in that. Um, so running you through some of the bigger challenges we faced. So Google had a bit of a problem and, you know, reading some literature that seems to kind of be a problem across the board that people, you know, combine, and this might be because of the kind of the product development roots of, of OKRs, that, you know, objectives have to be something new, something that drives change or a specific project, right? And that's problematic if you look at teams whose job it is to deliver on consistent things. If you want to use OKRs and then 80% of people's work is not part of those OKRs, um, it's going to be very, very hard to make sure that they feel aligned they, you know, and they feel motivated, right? What's the point of doing the other stuff if I'm not <laughs> moving anything there? Um, so mm -hmm. what I call these OKRs in my own terminology, there might be awesome terminal out there um, that let me know, I'm um, just calling these core OKRs. So this would be, you know, what do you need to do? What do your team need to do to actually not make the business fail or make the business reach its goal, right? So an example of this is I was at one point in charge of building out payments and gift card support for 14 European languages uh, across Europe, including Germany. So if you ever have problems with buying stuff from Google, that was one of my teams. Um, German is very, very big on the gift cards, by the way. And um, the problem there is, you know, my job, it literally says in my title, is making sure that we have, you know, stable and good support, right? Nowhere in there does it say kind of like improve it, right? So a very, very big chunk of my job was making sure there's stuff there, that something happens or something doesn't happen, right? Um, obviously, having something like, let's la launch Greek support, right? That's a nice, clear project. It's very easy to put that as an objective. But what do you do with uh, you know, making sure we answer X number of calls? So I'm not really saying you know, um, you know, we shouldn't in all instances try to you know, strive to become better and move these objectives forward. But you know, I think we're shooting ourselves in the foot, at least Google is, when at the end of the quarter people have to scramble and find like the cool bits they did versus what they actually their core role was doing. So it's something to consider there. Um, second problem we faced was, you know, as I said, people kind of scramble at the end of the quarter and take um, accountability for you know random metrics that move because of initiatives they have been running. Um, similarly, you know, there's no real kind of control or quality checks on OKRs um, or not enough. You know, there's some methodologies where you have, you know, objective, you need to have five KRs and you need to have a sixth, uh, you know, quality KR to make sure that, you know, I need to achieve these things, but I'm not allowed to move this. And that works great possibly, you know, projects and so on, but again, in, in bigger, um, when there's, there's more day-to-day -day work, there's more you know, kind of core stuff needed to get done, and there's normally a lot more to control for. So um, I'm definitely quite, oh sorry, uh, damaged when it comes to this, because I worked with a lot of outsourcing partners, and outsourcing partners are there for profit, and if you tell them to move one lever, they're just gonna pull back on another lever. So you know, an example of this would be, you know, we want to increase our response rate, or we want to increase our you know, satisfaction with customers. So what they would do is, yeah, let's you know, spend five more minutes on each call and give everyone five euros in compensation after having to call us, and then people became happy, right? And yes, they delivered on that key you know, thing we told them to do, make customer happier or drive CSAT up, 
but they obviously did not get the intent of the OKR, right? So um, what I use for this, and it's become really, really important within Goodlord to make sure like when you grow that quickly, that you do it in a scalable way, right? You're not burning your uh, books or you're not burning through cash to hit you know, like some, some kind of arbitrary goal you set for yourself. So um, I use in operations kind of interlocking OKRs. So again, just an extension really of, of quality KRs where you know each of these OKRs fits together in such a piece that I can't move one and just get that up and let everything else fail because then I'm gonna fail my other objectives, right? So um, in operations, everything has to do with speed, productivity, and quality, or whatever you wanna name those things, right? How good are you doing things? How quickly can you do them? And kind of what cost is it gonna be when you do these things? So this is just, again, an extension, making sure these interlock to each other. If I go and you know, make sure that we answer people faster, are we then also making sure to remain quality? And this fits through you know, any kind of account managing roles. You can do it in sales as well, right? It's about, you know, you know I I'm, I'm need to close X amount of sales, but I'm burning through my book, right? What's my conversion rate on these sales things? Um, so that again is something that, you know, it's Google doesn't need to worry too much about because there's just like a massive slush fund of money running around. You know, you don't need to be efficient at that point, but for anyone who doesn't have a magical money-making tree, you know, it's always, always good to consider. <coughs> And the last thing I'm gonna pick on with Google, and this comes up a little bit to, to your question there as well, um, which is that you know OKRs are set quarterly. Um, you can have some longer plans, you know, for a year, and then you kind of revisit per year. But in Google, it's very much kind of this focus on a quarterly basis. And what that means is, you know, every quarter you need to review what am I doing, what I should I be doing next quarter and you know, put some kind of lovely metrics to get around that and then you all go out and work very aligned and very motivated on that specific goal. And that is a problem if you, again, are not in product or a you know, developer, because in product, yes, I built this product, it's done, I can move on to my next product or project manager, I finish my project and move on to the next project. But if you're the guy who needs to stand there and you know, deliver on that project consistently after the product manager has left. Um, those types of only focusing on kind of like the short term uh, objectives really, really have a detrimental effect. And in Google, I hit our sales team very, very hard. I'm not sure I know, did anyone have an account manager at Google at one point? No one is in the CPC business. But basically what they do is they get, you know, coming down from the team uh, company level, it makes absolutely sense to have certain types of KRs. Um, but when it comes down to the individual you know, sales team, what happens there is they become very confused and very erratic in their behavior. So the example I use here is that you know, Q1, everyone needed to sell YouTube. Like YouTube was the next big thing, every advertiser on YouTube, so they spent three months convincing all their publishers, all their advertisers to like YouTube is the next thing, you need content there, you need advertising there. The next quarter, mobile is the focus. So then everyone needs to ignore what happened last quarter, that's done. You know, YouTube is no longer the big thing, mobile is the big thing. Everyone needs to be on mobile, right? So it confused our clients a lot, right? Because they would not understand again consistency, especially working with larger, slow-moving organizations. You know, they set their budget for a year and then every three months we try to change it for them. And it also makes that, you know, you don't really get too many experts on a subject because you're constantly changing or moving the goal so you don't really know what you should be focusing on. And I must say a result of that was certain people who started ignoring these objectives because the next word is gonna change. So why on earth would I become an expert on YouTube? Because mobile is gonna be the next big thing. And then a quarter after that, who knows? So again, I was ripping pretty hard on, on, on Google there. Um, they're great, if there's any Googlers in the attendance. Good. Um, so, you know, Paul did a great job of kind of having a very structured approach to how we set OKRs. So I'm just gonna, you know, very briefly say how we do it and how we use it. Um, we set our company OKRs, which is, you know, what are we as a company trying to achieve? What's, what's it, oops, sorry, go here. Um, you know, what are we trying to achieve as an organization? Each team then go in or the, you know, department, depending on the size, goes in and say, what do I need to do to make our company reach this goal, right? Um, so if you look at a sales team, I need to bring X amount of accounts on. And a recommendation here is so what we do very much is try to get these as tangible 
and as, I wouldn't say manageable, right? They're still kind of stretch goal, but very tangible goals. If I tell the sales team to, you need to, you know, get 3,000 new accounts a quarter, um, that's gonna be kind of a, a big number and they're gonna work through it and they're not really gonna see the connection with what they do in each day-to-day -day work. So I really try to do is split them down almost to like a weekly or a monthly thing, right? So the average during the quarter need to be 20 accounts a week. And that makes it much easier for them with real-time data <coughs> to actually track themselves against how they're performing, you know? So they have a chance of picking it up. If you need to do 3,000, you need to constantly keep track of which day of the month is it and where should I be. Um, similarly, um, you know, I call this downstream. So anyone who has to deal with these clients, companies, or your account managers, uh, your support teams, and whatever other things uh, are in there, you know, they should look at kind of the same metric we have or the same company goal we have of that 10%. And look at you know how many transactions does that mean or how many x of whatever my team is doing does that mean and then setting up an okr around you know actually being able to hit that by a certain time of the quarter right so really you know the first team there is kind of <coughs> driving the growth and the second or any downstream teams are kind of managing or have to deal with the growth going through because if you don't have a connection there between you know your sales team is out doing closing three thousand accounts and no one else in the business is ready or aware of this, it's gonna be terrible you know, when they get onboarded and come live on it. And again, what I wanna mention here before is like having those quality OKRs or having something to keep this in check to make sure the balance there is right with you know, what you're trying to achieve in the long term as well as what you're trying to achieve in the short term. Not just throw money or people or something at, at the, the problem. And again, those quality OKRs is really what makes you think about you know what are the negative effects or what are the potential outcomes of you know growing 10x or 5x or whatever you really have to sit and think about it and that helps you a lot in trying to avoid getting these things hitting you in the face can't say no, nothing has hit me in the face uh, but you know at least we try to control for it we also use individual okrs um, and you know that's kind of like a, a structure of that's a very loose structure of how what type of okr we set kind of three core, like what are we expect you to deliver on, your kind of one or two project OKRs, which is more specific on kind of changing those numbers around. And then, you know, uh, people team puts in like a fun OKR, so that's more for yourself to develop. We do use weighting on individual OKRs, so like, you know, they have different values basically at the scoring uh, time. And we don't really do that with the teams, but on the individual, it really helps with them to show like where is the focus supposed to be, you know, what do we prioritize most? I have to do three, five things, you know, which of these should be kind of prioritized and in what order. And it also helps with kind of almost performance management on an individual level, you know, we can increase the weight of something where we know a person is struggling or something like that. So what tangible things do they help us with? So again, like the whole goal of getting OKRs in for us was alignment, right? Making sure the right hand knew what the left hand is doing at the time we're moving so quickly and making sure we have a shared goal for all departments and the focus as well right so if it doesn't fit my okr then why am i doing it if my okr doesn't fit the company okr then why am i doing it obviously you know a larger organization you know we at times are hitting this as well there are initiatives that need to happen on teams or departments that doesn't you know clearly align with company okrs but at least, you know, this really, really makes you think, like, am the thing I'm doing, am I doing that to help the business get where it wants to go, or am I doing that because I've always been doing it, or because someone told me to do it, right? Forces you into that position. And motivation is a huge piece. Like, I would say this is one of the, the major things, like, when we, when we uh, really got OKRs working on individual level, to see how, you know, you, you know, closing that one deal, you doing that one extra thing that you didn't want to do, how does that actually help the company, right? Because if you're sitting there silent by yourself and there is, you know, 100 clients you need to close, what does this one extra thing do for you, right? But you can see, you know, the kind of alignment between you closing that customer and the company doing something and you want, you know, to move with that company, right? Um, and again, I've, I've harped on about this quite a bit, but it you know, forces us to think about discipline, think about you know, how we're spending our resources, think about the future, um, and you know, that should ensure our scalability, um, you know, hope in an ideal world. Um, it also, again, signals from a team to another, or from a company to another, or department to another, 
what are we focusing on? Which the flip side of that is what are we not focusing on, right? Because um, focusing on is pretty easy. Everyone knows we want to grow, we want to do this, we want to do that. What are we gonna sacrifice or what are we not gonna focus at that time? Like what fires are we leaving burning? And that really helps, you know, into that departmental kind of sentiment. Because if our account managers know that our support team are not gonna focus on this this quarter, it just kind of cuts down on that frustration of things not happening. And similar between our dev teams and product team and all of that, right? Like what are the priorities we need to look at? But what what are we gonna ignore for now, right? Um, and then it does help us drive change for the business. I talked a lot about kind of core OKRs and things like that. But we frequently, I would like to say, we semi-regularly launch new features and products. And you know, OKRs is a really, really good way for us to make sure we get that across the business, get people to understand that when we launch a new product, this has a bearing on you. This is important to you as well. And you know, these OKRs we can set. You know, the most recent thing we did was launch an insurance product. We can set on a company level. You know, do X with insurance, and each team can then align OKRs around this and really show that you know I contribute to this, and also it is important for myself. Um, so it's not all you know butterflies and flowers at. Good Lord, you know, it is, it is quite a big challenge to, to get all of this to fit together. And to be honest, you know, there's a lot of stuff we can improve. But here's some of kind of the biggest things that we've been facing. So, you know, focus on a lot of what Google's doing wrong and blaming them. But, you know, there's things we are struggling with ourselves as well. And one of the big things I would say is kind of data and attribution. I think most people in tech has realized, you know, you need data. Um, and we have it. We have lots of it. Question is which data are you looking at and whose responsibility is it to clean that data up and make it useful, right? Um, adherence, you know, I'm, I'm sure people struggle with that as well, you know, getting people to actually do their OKRs um, and look at their OKRs and update their OKRs because, you know, there's always fires burning, there's always stuff that needs to be done and, you know, why would I prioritize kind of planning and thinking about these things? Um, qualitative OKRs, you know, that's kind of a development. Uh, one of our, my favorites was our objective of diving in, right? So yes, it's great to have kind of inspirational objective, but it would be great if we understood a little bit, you know, someone who's not in that team, what that objective actually means. We have to go and read the nitty gritty KRs on that. There's also way too many binary OKRs. You know, you say, you know, have zero problems with payments, true, false. Right, instead of specifying a percentage of time or a percentage something, right? Which means you fail day two of the quarter and what's the point of focusing on that objective anymore because it's already lost, right? Um, we also have a constant influx of new people and new managers. So yes, you have a challenge in you know, getting this across the larger organizations, but for those of us in small organizations, there's a lot of new people coming in. There's you know, hard to get a scalable way to kind of train everyone up, right? You need to get everyone coming in. So lots of refreshers. And you might have already read the solutions there. Uh, I'm not getting paid by GTM, I'm just saying, so like I'm not plugging, plugging uh, this just because of them. It happens so that GTM have answers a lot of these questions for us. Uh, but really, you know, it's, it's about having a unified approach, a unified tool, really removing any barriers you can think of to updating OKRs, to, to you know, updating metrics. Making sure there's an appearance, <coughs> everyone uses the same, I wouldn't say methodology, the same place, the same data, and the same well, tool, basically. Um, and something you know, that really, really helps is having a dedicated owner of OKRs. It's great to have an executive sponsor like myself, but you know, I go out there and I hold talks and I tell people to get excited about it. Having someone on the ground whose responsibility it is to go in and do nitty gritty things, go in and remind people like what's going on, go in and you know, remove these barriers, like why aren't they able to do their OKRs? Because X, Y, Z is happening, and they can uh, look at, can we remove that X, Y, and Z? And frequent refresher training, I may have that as well. So I think we kind of covered all of this, just leaving this uh, on here. But one important thing, and uh, you know, that was a little bit on, on this um, talk for today, right? There was no dogma, it's actually how you do. Don't worry too much about you know, following a specified, this is how OKR should be done, or this is what OKRs is. You know, the exercise in itself has a value, even if you absolutely fail miserably or you go completely at it wrong. Um, and again, you know, big companies are not doing as well as they could, so, so you know, what's the risk yourself there? 
don't expect to get it right. You know, you need to keep moving, you keep improving, you keep changing every quarter. You know, it takes you a month to set them the first time. It might take you three weeks to set them the second time, but like a constant iteration, a constant movement and seeing how can we improve on these. Um, make sure it's transparent to public. In my preference, use your core OKRs. Think about the quality. Um, look at the consistency. Does this OKR fit with the long-term vision? And is it just kind of a fad we came up with because you know someone heard a buzzword at a conference somewhere? Um, use the relevant metrics and have a clear owner. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Time for questions? Yes. Yeah, hi. Um, I'm Tessie. Thank you so much for the talk already. Uh, one question. Can you elaborate a little bit more on what a dedicated owner of OCR would do and also how do you sell this idea to a CEO? Like, you already talked about the benefits and it's yeah. really helpful already, but do you have something like a business case or how do you approach that, for example, a company which has never done that yes. and should maybe? So, so the way Thank I you. did it, which might not be the right for you, is I did it and I showed them afterwards. Or I show my CEO afterwards, okay. right? So um, half the company kind of reports into myself, which means you know I have a little bit of leeway. You don't need that much, but if you have a team of you know, two, three, you know <laughs> anything you can yeah. do to kind of try it and show yeah. the benefits, right? And in terms of the thank you so much, and the dedicated owner of OKR, yeah. What is the position exactly? So what is someone going to do in that position? So really like the biggest challenge we're facing right, is getting that data out and getting that data correctly tracked. Okay. Most people understand what they need to do, mm -hmm. how to measure what they're gonna do is the challenge. So we actually have a business analyst and you know, using GTM Hub, you know, he can write queries and do all these things. Mm -hmm. So things that these team would take a very long time of reporting, he can write an R script, or is that how you say it? Well, you can write stuff, right? And just make this kind of magically appear and also make sure that everyone is following a similar methodology. So business analysts would be my okay. suggestion. Thank you so much. No worries. Thank you. So you should really come in but let's say that your team does not make uh, their OKRs or reports. Um, and similarly, let's say they do. What is your incentivization as a company um, to help Yeah, and, and there's a lot of different thoughts around connecting OKRs to kind of individual compensation. So Google doesn't do that, they say, you know, they try to keep it separate because OKRs should be about development, reaching goals, alignment. Uh, on the other hand, you know, your OKRs got into a black box at Google and three weeks later you find out how much salary increase or if you got promoted. So they're clearly linked in, in some way. Um, so, so it is a tricky one, right? So it really is about trying to, to have a cadence of, of constantly doing it. Um, and you, know, you start seeing the values of what it actually brings. Because maybe it's, even if it doesn't give you, in this point, terribly much, um, you interacting with other teams and seeing what they have for OKRs will simplify your job, right? And then it becomes a little bit of quid for a crow, right? If you do your OKRs, they do their so OKRs and then you get some benefits of it. But yeah, you're absolutely right, you're hitting on one of the big channels. How do you keep people motivated, especially if you don't in any way connect it to kind of their salary or whatever? Do you, do you at uh, your current employer, um, like do celebrations of any kind? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We do celebrations. Like we win because we hit 70% of our targets. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And we look at our company OKRs every week in our, in our Friday stand-up. There's lovely graphics and music and showing like how we track <laughs> against it. And I think that's, and uh, for team OKRs, we do every week like during metrics review, um, we look at OKRs, like where to track against. So you look at OKRs to see more of how are you doing in general. And then we're going to kind of their more specific operational metrics or you know how they're performing this week and why is that going on. Similar individual level, we have one-on-ones at least uh, fortnightly. And then, you know, that's the first thing that gets brought up, like where you're tracking yourself against your OKR. I mean, personally, if, like, let's say the team wasn't successful, what happened? Like, what, how yeah, you uh, I think I had that on a slide I killed, right? But, you know, failure is fine. Um, setting an OKR should normally, like, the, the, the you know, accepted is that you put, for example, at 70% of reaching your OKR, that is doing your, like, that's doing good, right? That's doing well. 
Um, as I know, it's within Google, the only comp team that ever got a one on an OKR was the Google Plus team. I'm not sure how familiar with Google Plus, but that gives you an understanding, right? <laughs> only team ever. So yes, right, you should not reach a full OKR because then you are not setting ambitious goals enough. On the other hand, when you fail, the important thing is to look at why you fail, right? Because this is a learning experience and we look at why did we fail? Because we have no clue when we set the OKR. Okay, that's a reason. But because this happened and we couldn't focus on this, right? There's very rarely, you know, a, a team who fails, I would say, because they're just not trying, right? There's normally a reason and we learn from that. Yes. Yeah. Oh. We, we have a schedule to oh, keep, sorry. so we'll have a Q&A session just after the... After the two talks? Yeah.